Good evening, everyone. I uh, want to welcome you, as always, to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Uh, uh, as always, we, we pray that you have had a wonderful and a blessed day. Uh, pray you're doing well, uh, feeling well, in good health. Uh, but, but we just, as always, we thank you for tuning in uh, with us on Wednesday nights as we uh, go through our Bible class virtually. Uh, we just this really has been a uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, you know, we, we've always had Bible study before the pandemic, but uh, we never uh, did it live. And so, but but through the pandemic, we thank God that uh, now we have a uh, another avenue of getting His Word out to those. So many people work on Wednesdays or. <clears throat> not able to participate in Bible study, but really wanted to be in Bible study. And so uh, that's one good thing about uh, uh, this social media stuff, these platforms that we can use uh, to still <clears throat> get God's word out to his people. So uh, as always, we thank you for tuning in uh, with us. Uh, and as always, we want to uh, always uh, continue to, to ask us to uh, do our part uh, as we continue to live and adjust in this new era, this time that we're living in of this pandemic. They are uh, relaxing mandates uh, throughout the country. Uh, but uh, again, you do what you feel uh, uh, is best uh, for you. And, and, and you still have the uh, uh, medical experts at the CDC uh, saying that uh, it's not time to get relaxed. It's time to stay vigilant. So just uh, we just encourage you to continue to, to wear your mask when you're in large settings, uh, have not been vaccinated, boosted. Uh, we still encourage you to do those things So, uh, because we have to uh, continue to uh, live. Uh, God does not expect us to sit down and, and stop living, stop uh, going about our daily lives in this pandemic. So we have to adjust. That's one thing about us. We don't like uh, to adjust. We don't like to uh, do things different or new unless it's something that we feel benefits us. But when we look at the greater whole uh, of what we're doing, uh, that it benefits the greater whole, the greater good, uh, we tend to push back. Uh, you look at this, uh, uh, the, the, the boycott they have at the Canadian border uh, up in Detroit uh, with these truckers are, uh, are boycotting the mandates and they, they shutting down the... Uh, transportation lines uh, of, of goods uh, coming into the United States because they don't want to be told uh, uh, to wear a mask or to be back or to whatever it is. So uh, again, uh, we, again, I've always said we are so big on, on our rights and what we want to do that we forget uh, that it's not just about us. Uh, uh, God has placed us here uh, with each other and we should all do we can do all we can to be each other's Keeper, brothers keep it. Amen. So, but anyway, last couple of weeks I was in uh, the book of John talking about Lazarus because I just wanted to encourage uh, a few people who I knew were going through some some medical uh, situations and uh, were getting reports from the doctors, and I just wanted to encourage them uh, that 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 God has a greater purpose. Uh, the sicknesses that you are going through, that you're dealing with, your family members are dealing with, uh, is not until death, but it's for God to get glory. And so glorify God, even in your trials and tribulations. So um, that's where we've been the past couple of weeks. And so I want to get back here in second Timothy, the second chapter and try to go ahead uh, and, and conclude this second chapter of Timothy. And you, know, you all know that for, for several weeks and probably over a month or so, I've been in second Timothy and I've been talking about uh, 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 my focal point was uh, being used by God or being able to, uh, uh, for God to use you. And so uh, that's still my question. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, do we want God to use us? That's a personal question that each and every one of us should ask ourselves. Do I want to be used by God? Do I want to put myself in a position or place myself uh, where God can use me? Uh, that should be a personal question. And, and, and to each of us, uh, we all should want to be uh, used by God. We all should want uh, to be able to be a blessing uh, to God uh, and to others through God. And so, uh, but that's a personal question. Do you want God to be able to use you? And, and if so, then we must do uh, what Paul is telling young Timothy here in this second chapter of Timothy. 
in the second letter of Timothy in the second chapter. So remember, Paul is about to leave the scene. And so he's given his final instructions to his young preacher, Timothy, on what to do, uh, uh, what not to do, uh, how he needs to carry the baton of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul has all confidence and faith in Timothy that he will continue on. But as a good leader, a good teacher of a protege, he wants to give him his final uh, margin orders uh, uh, from 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 a place of wisdom. And so, you know, I think the last we stopped, it was on 15, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, where, where, where Paul tells Timothy to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. I think that's where we ended. And so we're going to pick up here at verse 16 uh, and go forward. So verse 16, 2 Timothy 2 and 16, uh, Paul says, he says, but shun profane and vain babylons, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So in other words, Paul is telling Timothy, I think he said it up here, uh, he said it up here. I'm going to find a verse too. Yeah, verse 14, he tells them of things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, uh, but to the subverting of the hearers. Uh, so so he, here he is in 16, uh, one verse down from 14, 15, and he goes right to 16 and tells them again to shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto the more godliness. So <clears throat> what Paul is saying, and you know, you think about it. I know being married and being in marriage, they tell you uh, that communication is the key uh, in your marriage. And most people think it's, it's about finances and they think it's about uh, uh, the romance and, and, and all those things. But the key uh, to a good marriage is communication. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to communicate effectively. And that uh, is a universal uh, uh, a lesson that communication is key. Uh, Jesus came in, in the flesh physically to save us, to redeem us, but also to communicate uh, his gospel, to communicate, to teach, to preach his word. So com effective communication is very important. And, and Paul is telling Timothy here uh, that if you, if your communication, if the talk, the chatter, uh, the teaching, the what's going on is not of God, then it is going to be of none effect. It's actually going to cause harm. So just as uh, in marriage, communication is key. It is also key in the body of Christ, in the church. And so vain communication can destroy relationship, even in a physical relation, I mean, a, a, a marital relationship or a, a, a friend relationship, if your communication is, 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 is uh, not constructive, if it's hurtful, if it's all of those things, it destroys the relationship and it hinders the relationship. And Paul is telling Timothy here, if you are going to carry on the banner, if you're going to continue to preach this gospel, you must be careful on what you say, and you also must be careful on what others say. Those who are under you, those who are, 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 are in company with you, those who are in the body with you. He tells them to shun profane and vain babbling. First of all, he tells them to shun. What, what does shun mean? Shun means to persistently avoid it. Amen. When you shun something, you're trying to avoid it. You, you ignore it. You reject it. Isn't it something that we reject and we shun and, 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 and we avoid uh, things that we should, but the things that we should not reject, those are the things we receive and we take in. Like we will, we will shun in, in the body. We will shun and we will reject correction. I don't want you to correct me. You, you don't want me to correct you. You don't want to be corrected. So we shun that. If you're corrected by your leader, your teacher, your pastor, whoever it may be, you shun that. But that's not what you should shun. Paul, God, the Bible does not tell us to shun rebuke, shun correction. We should shun vain babbling. We should shun godless and useless talk and communication in the body. 
But no, that's not us. Our demeanor is to shun the things that 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 God intends to help us. We don't want to be corrected. We we shun that. We we shun teaching. We we reject teaching. We reject the things that actually help us. But Paul is telling Timothy here, young brother, you need to shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto the more godly ungodliness. In other words, this chitter chatter, this this uh, a useless talk in the body of believers. We need to shun that. Now I know that's a surprise to some because to most of us, to most of us, we 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 don't have a problem with embracing and and grabbing onto vain and babblings and and talk that has no meaning to edifying the body, to building up the brother or sister. We gravitate. We want that. But but when it comes to shunning the the mistruths or or, or the theories or the things that we don't agree with, we have an issue with that. But Paul is clearly saying you should shun profane. Profane means common, irrelevant, godless talk. How much irrelevant, how much godless talk goes on within the body? Paul is talking to Timothy here and, and he's referencing Timothy as it refers to the body, the church. Not necessarily the unbelievers, the unsaved, because that is an issue that we have. Uh, we're so focused on what the unsaved or what people who don't per se know Christ are doing that we forget that we are doing the same things. We need to be corrected. We need to shun vain talking and babbling. We need to do those things and we get so focused on others that we forget to look inwardly and see where I need to be doing better myself. How much godless talk go on in the body of Christ? How much godless talk go on Sunday after Sunday? Even when service is going on, when preaching is teaching is going on, how much godless talk is going on back in the fellowship hall? How much godless talk is going on through the texts and amongst each other in the church. We look at our, our youth and we see them on, the, on their phones in the back, in the pews back there, but it ain't just the young folks on their cellular phones with their head down in their phone while preaching is going on. It's some godly stuff going on. There's some ungodly things going on. And so Paul is telling Timothy, you, Timothy, you don't do it and you don't allow others to do it. Hmm. He says, you avoid it. You, 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 you. You, 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 you rebuke it. You chastise it. You don't allow it. And we as believers should be the same way. We shouldn't want to be the ones to carry it. We shouldn't want to be the ones to promote it because what we're promoting, Paul says, is ungodliness. How can we be believers? How can we be Christians? How can we be saints sanctified, but we are promoting ungodliness with our communication? That, that even goes into how we speak to each other, how we talk to each other. You, you don't have to demean a person to, to talk to a person in Christ, even in your correction. You don't have to uh, uh, dehumanize and demean a person and talk down to them like they are nothing because you are correcting them. Correction, correction and rebuke. Rebuke is about correction. It's not about harm. We got it mixed up. And I think we have become, uh, uh, ex uh, I don't want to say excited, but we've become uh, uh, content with hurting people by what we say and what we do. And it doesn't even matter to us anymore. But you better beware to what, to what you're doing and who you're doing it to. Paul says we need to reject that. We need to... Uh, 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 avoid that. We need to shun it. Push it away. You know how you shun stuff you don't want? A amen. You know, young ladies, how you, you shun a, a shyster when you don't want to deal with him? You know how it is? You reject him. You, you, you brush him off quick. Well, Paul is saying this ungodly chatter, this ungodly communication, these theories, these, these uh, traditional things that we think and we come up with, Paul says shun that stuff. He says shun that. Profane, irrelevant, godless, vain, 
Vain means empty. He said profane and vain. Vain means empty. If what you're saying is empty, if what you're saying is empty, that means it has no substance. That means it's, it does nothing if it's empty. You don't want empty promises. You don't, God is not a God who gives us empty. God said, I came that you may have life and have it more. I came that you may be full. He said, they that thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled, not empty. God is a God of fooling, fulfilling. The Holy Spirit, it indwells you. It fills you. God is not an empty God. And if we are doing things and saying things that are empty, shame on us. How, how are we lining up with a full God with empty communication, with empty motives, with empty agendas, with empty love, with empty promises, with empty faithfulness? We're not even faithful. We empty in our service to God. Have mercy, somebody. Vain means empty, meaningless. How can you be a part of the body and be meaningless? How can you be a part of the body and what you do is meaningless? If you are part of the body of Christ, God's body, then everything we should do should be fulfilling. It should be kingdom-minded. It should be uh, uh, to save and to help those who need the help. And he said, shun profane and vain babylons. Babylons is nothing more than empty voices chattering away in empty and godless discussions. Babylons. It's nothing more than empty voices chattering away in empty and godless discussions. What are the discussions that we are having in the body of Christ? Paul is saying even when we are having our meetings, even when we're having our discussions, even when we're having our, uh, our, our Bible classes, our Sunday school, our, church, our discussions, are they babbling? Are they are they empty discussions or are they discussions that that bring about a change this is a this is the test e even in our rebuke th this is a test this was uh, 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 someone said he said herein here then is the test if at the end of the talk and discussion we are closer to one another and closer to God then all is well good discussion Good talk, good lesson. If at the end of the discussion, we are closer to one another and closer to God, then all is well. But if at the end of our discussion, if, if we have erected barriers between each other and we have left God more distant and our view of him is more confusing than all is wrong. So in other words, when we are having a discussion, when we are teaching, when we are talking, whatever it is, if our discussion, at the end of discussion, you and I have become closer, uh, uh, you and God have become closer, then that's a good discussion. Now, listen, and even when you're being rebuked and, and chastised, and reproved again when you do it in a godly manner, when you're not doing it to demean and tear a person down, but to build a person back up and correct them, even at the end of that discussion, you and I can be closer and that you and God can be closer. But if, it, but if at the end of the discussion, whatever it is, if we have put up barriers and now we're all of a sudden not wanting to speak to one another and our understanding is, is, is more confusing and we're no closer to God than what was the discussion really about? What, what was the purpose of the discussion? To be right? I, I've said this before. I've said this before. Everybody wants to be right, but no one wants to be righteous. If at the end of discussion, if all you can get 
Not that we are closer, not that you have a greater understanding, not that you're closer to God. If all you can get out of it is I was right. But there, now there's a barrier. Now there's confusion. And all you can get was I was right. And not being righteous. We lost some. So Paul is telling Timothy, listen, young Timothy, brother, we, we have to we have to shun that stuff. We have to get away from that because what that does, it causes problems in the body. It causes problems in the church. Matter of fact, he said it increases unto more ungodliness, meaning we 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 grow in ungodliness rather than growing in godliness. We are more focused on the ungodly chatter, the theories, the things that are not true, more so than we are in growing in truth. Because at the end of the day, that's where we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be maturing in truth. And even when we were maturing in truth, if the truth says what I'm doing and how I'm living is ungodly, then I need to check myself and I need to correct myself. Truth makes us grow in godliness, not ungodliness. Amen. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy. Lies will make you grow into ungodliness. So look what he says. Go on. Let's go on here. Well, I got a scripture. Uh, Romans 16. Romans 16, 17, 18. This is what Paul says. He says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. In other words, take note of them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. He says, avoid them. If someone is teaching a doctrine which is contrary to what you have learned. I'm talking about foundation now. I'm not talking about the, the theories and all this stuff because we got in, in different interpretations. I'm talking about sound, the foundation of the doctrine. Like, like, like Jesus is the Christ. That's foundation stuff. Like, like he, he died on a cross. That, that is foundation stuff. Like, like we are saved by faith, not through works. Those are foundational things. I'm not talking about a, a different translation and different interpretation because we can get different interpretations and different translations and we can have discussions to still, as I said, at the end of discussion to come to clo come closer together, come closer to God and to have a clearer understanding. But 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 the 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 foundation must not be tampered with. It must not be taught differently. And that's what Paul is telling here in, in Romans. He says, uh, I beseech you, brethren, mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines which you have learned. He says, avoid them. In other words, you need to get away from them. You don't need to consider this, this my good teacher, this my, this my iron that sharpens me. No, if it's contrary to the doctrine which you were taught, Paul says, avoid them. Then he says in 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies. In other words, they got an agenda. It's not to uplift the kingdom of God. It's not to make you better, to mature you. It's not so that God gets glorified. It's they have their own agenda, it's but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, I mean, they, they're eloquent in their speaking and, you know, they, they can do it. They can, they, they. They end by their word, good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Yeah, all that good speech and all that eloquent speaking is deceiving the hearts of those who are simple. Simple, not, not a negative, a derogatory term, just a, a, a less learned, a less skilled. So Paul said, you got to watch them type of folks. Then in Titus 3, Titus 3. Look how that time be flying. Titus 3, 9 through 11. I'm, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. New Living Translation says, do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to the Jewish law. Paul said, look, it, 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 Titus said, he said, do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigree. Oh my God, don't we do that? Don't we get in foolish discussion about our pedigrees 
What's my pedigree? I'm this. I have that. I went here. I studied that. I'm this. Paul said, if that's what your discussion is about your spiritual pedigree, he, he said, if that's what your discussion is about your spiritual pedigree, he said, why are you quarreling and fighting about, the, about that stuff? That, that stuff, your pedigrees and, and your, what you did and all this, what is that doing for the kingdom? He said, don't quarrel about that stuff. And don't we have that in our churches, in our bodies? Don't we quarrel about where well, you're not qualified to do this or you can't speak on this or you don't know this? These things are, he said, these types of, these things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and a second warning after that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. Be careful. And that's what Paul was telling Timothy here. Uh, and said, Be careful, young brother. Be careful. So look, so he goes on. 17. I'm Y'all know I'm going to have to pick back up next week. <laughs> he goes on here in 17. In 17, he says, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hominius and Philetus. So Paul is telling Timothy, he said, these, these vain and profane Babylons, he said, not only do they increase ungodliness, he said, but the word will eat, the word will spread. The word will spread as doth a canker, a, a cancer of whom is Hominius and Philippians. Amen. The, those vain babbling, those things spread like a cancer in the body. I, I said it Sunday. I, I talked about how we can, uh, 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 how we won't get views on the Bible study live. We won't get views on the worship service. But but if you, if you showed a fight, a church fight, or y'all know how we, all these videos we see on TikTok and all that. If we see a TikTok fight in the church, oh man, you would, you would break. You would get, I couldn't tell you how many likes and views and, and comments on, but how many comments, how many likes, how many views can we get on shun profane babblings? Shun godless and useless chatter. How many likes we gonna get on that? Paul says here, he said it'll spread. Those type of things spread like a cancer in the church. Y'all, yeah, we do the little, the little exercise where I say something and then we pass it back. And by the time we get around there, it's a different exercise. Well, check it's, a, it's that's what it's talking about. This useless chatter, this these doctrines, these these traditions, these things that are are, are are once saved, always saved, or women preachers can all that type of stuff. It spreads like a cancer, and it doesn't bring the body together. It separates the body. He's telling Tim, be careful. He said, that stuff spread like a cancer. How is it and why is it that the ungodly stuff spreads like a cancer? But the truth does not spread. The truth is not shared. Why doesn't that spread? But, but a gossip or what I heard Deacon so-and-so was doing a uh, what I heard preacher so-and-so or evangelist so-and-so doing, that'll spread like fire, like cancer. And you can put a, a physical fire out, but these spiritual fires and cancers that spread, hard to put those out because we don't know how to forgive. We don't know how to let stuff go. Even if it's true, and a lot of times it's lies, but even if it is true, we don't know how to forgive. So the best thing to do is to leave it alone. It's to shun it like Paul said. Because if you're not mature enough and big enough to hear it, you don't want to help. You don't want to uh, 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 hinder them. And you don't want to forgive. Then why spread it? Why put your mouth on it? Why put your mouth on the person? Leave it alone. Shun it. No, I'm going to shun that though. I want to know, I want to hear what they saying about so-and-so. Amen. 
That's my time for today. I, I, I'll pick up next week talking about Arminius and uh, Philetus. Because uh, you can go on down and read that, tell you exactly, you, you'll see exactly why Paul uh, had an issue with them. Uh, and that's why he was, he, he picked these two fellas out because these two fellas was teaching uh, something that Paul uh, did not agree with. And so that's why he specifically called out their name uh, as, as what they were teaching was spread like cancer. If you don't shun them and, 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 and reject them. Amen. So, so again, if we're talking about, we want to be used by God. We want to be fit so God can use us. That's what Paul is telling Timothy here. Timothy, in order for God to use you, you got to shun certain things. In order for God to use you, you have to be mindful of what you're saying. You have to be mindful of ungodliness. Amen. So if we want to be just like, excuse me, Paul is telling Timothy, if we want to be used, we want God to use us, then we got to, as the Bible says, present ourselves in a way where God can use us. God wants to use all of us, but he can't use all of us because of how we are presenting ourselves to him. Make sure you're presenting yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Not unto me, not unto so-and-so, but acceptable unto God. People going to say what they want to say. People going to put their mouth on you. People going to talk. But as long as it's acceptable unto God, that's all that matters. And he will use you absolutely. Amen. God know how to use you. Amen. Just like when Jesus was on the earth, when Jesus told the disciples, Yo, it, it, when you go into a town or city, into a house, they don't want it. They don't want to receive you, shake the dust, and move off. God will use you somewhere else. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about people's opinions of you. You just present your body a living sacrifice. You make sure it's holy and it's acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God will use you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. That's our lesson for the day. I want to be used by God. I pray you want to be used by God. So uh, I, I got to watch my communication. You gotta, we got to watch uh, what we are bringing in uh, and allowing to be brought in. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I uh, pray you have a blessed rest of the week, safe rest of the week. Uh, let's have a closing word of prayer. Father God, it is again in your son Jesus' name, Lord. We come at the close of another Bible study, thanking you for your Holy Spirit, thanking you for uh, what we have uh, heard on this evening. We pray, Lord, that everything that was said was pleasing unto you, was according to your word, uh, was not vain, uh, was not ungodly, uh, was not just babbling, Lord, but uh, were uh, sound, uh, doctrine, sound, instruction on what we should do to be able uh, to be used by you. I pray, Father, right now, Lord, you bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice that's on this live. Uh, touch them, Father, in whatever they stand in need of. Bless everything that is attached to them. We continue to pray for our country, our leaders. Uh, we continue to pray for uh, those who are in the healthcare field, who are still on the front lines, been on the front lines for a couple of years now, battling this pandemic. Continue to give them the strength they need. Uh, Father, we just thank you. We pray for those who are uh, dealing with illness and sickness. Heal them, touch their bodies. We pray for reconciliation with family. Uh, Father, we just pray that your spirit would move throughout this land. Father, we, we, we love you, Lord. We need you. Uh, and we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.